This is the brand new Nike TW13 golf shoe. Well, I say brand new in that this actually is a retro. So this is a 2023 version of the 2013 Tiger Woods Nike golf shoes. And that's a big deal in the golfing world, especially for sneakerheads, because this represents pretty much the first retro golf shoe that I can think of really. And it's come about because this is such an iconic shoe for Tiger Woods. And there's a lot of love for these. So Nike have taken the decision to jump on the back of that and make a retro with these shoes. But the key question is, are they any good? And are they worth the 225 pound price tag that you pay for them here in the UK? So I've been using these shoes out in the real world, testing them in some pretty harsh conditions. So in this video today, I'm gonna to cover off the fit and feel of these shoes, how they perform, how waterproof they are. And I'm also gonna address some of the concerns in regards to the quality of the materials and the construction of these shoes. So in fact, let's tackle that one first. I've got to say that there are some imperfections that I've spotted with my shoes that I've got here, but they're not to the point where I would return them, although I could appreciate that some other people might, based on the fact that they're spending a lot of money on these shoes. For example, you can see here on the front that the glue has kind of peeled away from that upper material on the base of the tongue. And then on the inside of the shoe as well, you can see here that the thread is pulling loose on this section here. And there's a couple of other areas as well where there's some loose threads and the glue in doesn't necessarily look particularly well done. That being said, 225 pounds here in the UK, and I think they're $240 in the US. It's a lot of money for a pair of golf shoes. And yes, you do get this additional shoe bag with Nike Golf there written on the bottom of it, but does that make up for the price tag of these shoes? No, not really in my opinion. So you, if you are gonna buy these shoes, you're buying them for the love of them and the performance, to be fair, because they do perform pretty well out on the course. But in the grand scheme of things, I think there are better golf shoes, better feeling golf shoes, better performing golf shoes that will cost you less money. What's also been a little bit embarrassing for Nike is the fact that this is Tiger Woods' first retro golf shoe and he didn't even wear them at launch. In fact, he hasn't even worn them at all out on the PGA Tour this year. And that's because he's wearing Footjoy golf shoes. And you've got to think that the Nike marketing team are just face palming at that massive L that they've taken there in terms of the marketing potential that they could have had with this golf shoe. Now, clearly Tiger is wearing the Footjoy Premier golf shoes because they give him additional support and stability that he needs compared to any of the Nike golf shoe range and specifically these ones, the TW13s. I'd say that they fit true to size and I'd say that they're pretty much a regular kind of fit when it comes to width. They're not hugely narrow, but they're not particularly wide either. So if you have got a wide foot, then you may wanna consider going up half a size in these shoes. Feeling of these shoes is comfortable, but it is gonna be quite different from what you've experienced in other Nike sneakers and golf shoes in the past. That's because these are utilizing the Nike Free technology. And what that means is that these have been designed specifically to work with your foot in the natural motion when you're out walking on the golf course. Now for me, because I pretty much walk the course all the time, I actually really enjoyed the feeling of these shoes. They're not necessarily the softest underfoot, but it doesn't mean that they're uncomfortable. They're just not as soft as something like a Nike React midsole or a Zoom Air Pocket running all the way along the bottom of them, but they're still comfortable enough. But what it means is, is that you get a good range of motion. And the way that it does that is you can see here that the outsole is split up into all these different quadrants. And that gives the shoe a nice amount of flexibility when you're out walking and transitioning on the course. They're also, Mm, stable-ish, but you can see here that you have got quite a lot of flex in these shoes. Compared to something like, here we go, the brand new Footjoy Hyperflex that's come out, there's very little kind of flex, but also there's not quite as much flexibility in that transition. Are you gonna see a notable difference out on the golf course in terms of performance? Probably not but it does come down to personal preference. And again, with Tiger Woods needing something a little bit more stable at the moment, you can understand why he's not necessarily wearing this shoe. That being said, I personally didn't have any problems in terms of stability with these shoes. If you are finding this video helpful and enjoyable, please hit that like button on the video. It really means so much to me because it will show me that I'm still on the right track with the information that I'm providing on this channel. And also it will help other people see this video because that's the way that the YouTube gods 
work and the algorithm will start pushing it out to more people. So please, thank you, that'll be amazing. And if you are thinking about buying these shoes, then I have included the links to nike.com down in the description below, where these shoes are still currently available, both in the UK and the US. Still talking about comfort, you've got a nice amount of padding here at the heel of the shoe and straight out of the box, wearing these for 18 holes, I didn't get any blisters whatsoever. And it is a very lightweight feeling shoe also. And that's in part due to this lightweight synthetic upper that's being used. Now I do want to point out that I've got quite a narrow foot. However, I did notice the feeling of the upper creasing on the top across my toes as I walked in this shoe. And actually sometimes you can kind of hear that clicking noise. And I could hear that out on the course as the upper was creasing. Now, it wasn't uncomfortable, but I could notice it. And well, would that put me off wearing these shoes? Maybe. Perhaps that's just the way that my foot is interacting with these shoes. So you might not necessarily experience that so much. What you will get with these shoes is some creasing on that synthetic upper. You can see here, it's already started here and that's just naturally bedding into the shoe. You are getting a nice secure lockdown fit with these shoes because Nike have integrated their Flywire technology into the lacing system. So you can see here that the laces are going through these nylon loops and you've got a nice little red accent for the Tiger Sunday Red at the top of that one. And those are attached to Flywire, which goes right the way down to the midsole and then the, actually I think maybe in the outsole, well certainly the midsole of the shoe on both the outside and the inside. If I hold it up closer, you can probably see those wires there going through the upper. And that means that when you do these shoes up, it's really kind of pulling the upper around your foot and giving you a good locked in feeling. Now, I like that sensation of having a locked in feeling with my golf shoes. However, again, because I've got quite a narrow foot, I've got to admit that I could feel that fly wire on the outside area there of those bottom laces, right on the outside edge of the ball of my foot. And for me, again, it wasn't uncomfortable, but it was noticeable. It's something that I could feel that I don't really feel on other golf shoes. So again, if you've got a wider foot that fills the shoe a little bit more, you're probably not gonna notice that. But if you've got a narrow foot, something that you're gonna feel that feels a little bit different. The tongue is very lightweight, so I didn't really feel any kind of interaction or issue with my foot on there. And you've got a little bit of padding across the laces as well, which just helps to soften the feeling of the laces pulling down on the top of your foot. Again, I didn't have any issues with those. Now, of course, I did my full waterproof test on these. So I poured 300 milliliters of water over both the upper as well as the bottom portion of the laces. And I can confirm that no water gets through that upper. That's absolutely fine. However, quite a bit of water did get through on the tongue section through the laces there because there's nothing necessarily to stop that water getting through as direct access to your foot. And so if you're out playing in really wet conditions or you're traipsing through heavy, wet, rough, then your feet might get a little bit wet wearing these shoes. In terms of traction from this outsole, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. I actually really enjoyed the experience of wearing these. I didn't slip at all. You've got the combination of these six spikes or cleats. You've got some kind of like, um, kind of raisedness. You can see here there are a point on the white sections here, but that's midsole foam material. So you can see me compressing that there. That's not gonna give you any additional grip, but you do also get quite some nice aggressive grip and traction on the toe as well as the heel with these kind of more reinforced rubber sections of the shoe. And then what you also get as well, if you see on the outside there, you get that reinforced rubber section. And it's kind of almost holding the shoe in from the outside there where it's raised on the outside and on the inside, you then get this kind of like spikes splaying out to the inside of the shoe as well. So overall, you are getting some good traction from this shoe. In fact, I did just want to show you as well, in terms of cleaning up these shoes, they actually clean up pretty nicely. So I gave these a quick wash with some warm soapy water, it literally took a minute or two. And here's the one that wasn't washed here. So you can see there's quite a lot of mud on that midsole there. It didn't really take too long. So that is a pro with these shoes is that they do wipe up nice and clean. They look pretty much brand new. They do look like a shoe of 10 years ago as such, but that's because they are a shoe of 10 years ago. They've got quite an athletic, almost trainer style design to them. And I believe that was the point 
when these were originally launched. Tiger wanted something that looked more fashionable and more like a sneaker, while still having the performance he needed out on the course. It's almost a combination of subtle and aggressive details on the shoe. So the gray elements here, quite subtle, contrasting that white upper. The Tiger Woods logo on the back, nice and subtle, again, with the little Tiger Woods logo on the tongue and the little bit of Tiger Sunday red on the sides. But then also you've got the quite chunky and aggressive toe section here, which is serving a kind of performance benefit, but is also quite a bold look at the front of the shoe. You've got the big Nike swoosh on both sides as well. And on the bottom, you've also got the Nike swoosh as well as the Tiger Woods logo on this plasticky kind of little reinforced bit here on the underside of the shoe. But you've also got the stitching of the upper here, the synthetic upper on the outside. It's a separate section to that inside material there. Can you see how that's two different bits? Interesting design. I think it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty unique out on the course. I think it also looks pretty classy and you can easily wear these with a pair of shorts, but looks great with a pair of trousers too. Now I've neither got the legs nor the body fat to pull off shorts in this kind of weather at the moment here in the UK. So I'm sticking with trousers. Overall, I like these shoes. I think they look good and they look unique. They don't really look like anything else that I've currently got in my golf shoe collection. Is it a collection? Yeah, probably. And I like the performance. These are some of the best performing Nike golf shoes that you can currently buy. But with that being said, you're paying a lot of money for that privilege. And in my opinion, it's too much money. 225 pounds here in the UK is just too much for what you're getting with these shoes. They're nice feeling golf shoes, they're comfortable, but they're not the most comfortable golf shoes. They're good performing, but they're not the most stable. There's still a lot of flexibility in these shoes. They're not entirely waterproof. They let quite a bit of water in through that tongue area compared to other shoes. So in reality, 225 pound, you're paying for the look. You're paying for the Tiger Woods name and the fact that these are Tiger's very first retro golf shoes from 2013, which he's not even currently wearing. That's a bit of a kicker. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think of these shoes? Did you pick up a pair and how are you getting on with them? If you're looking for a more casual pair of Nike golf shoes, then why not check out my full review of the Air Jordan 1 Low Golf Shoes, which I've included a link to right here. Or if you're looking for a more performance driven pair of golf shoes, then check out my full review of the FootJoy Tour Alpha golf shoes, which I've included a link to right here.